Hello everyone, this is a video tutorial on Photoscan program version 0.9. I'm going to show you how to process aerial images with Photoscan Professional Edition to generate an author photo and a digital elevation model. In this tutorial we will run through the basic steps. The first thing you need to do is to adjust the program window for your project. I know for sure that I won't use scale bars in my project, so I can close the scale bar section on the ground control pane. If you want to open or close any pane, you go to the view menu and click the corresponding pane. For example, I can open console pane if I'm going to overview the log information during the processing. In tutorial we won't use it, so I close it again. One more preparation that should be done is checking of the processing settings if you use the program for the first time on the machine. Open tools menu and click Photoscan Preferences command. On General tab, set the path the Photoscan log file and check the depth filtering parameter is set to aggressive value. Switch to the OpenCL tab and make sure that all the OpenCL devices available are checked. Photoscan uses GPU's acceleration which speed up processing significantly. Click OK. Now let's start our project. The first thing you need to do is to add photos. To do this, switch to the workspace pane and click to on the Add Photos toolbar button. Browse to the folder containing the images you are going to process. Here is my data set prepared for the tutorial. Select all the photos and click Open. On the workspace pane we see that a chunk has been created and it contains 65 cameras, that is 65 photos. The photos themselves can be seen on the Photos pane. Now you need to add camera positions data. Sometimes we say add ground control data. So you switch to the ground control pane and click import button. Choose specially prepared text file containing camera positions data and click open. The data should have been prepared in character separated values format. My file contains X and Y coordinates and the height for each camera position. You can also add columns for pitch, yaw and roll values and import them into the program. However, in the current version orientation data is not used during processing, so it wouldn't influence the results. Check that the delimiter and the numbers of the columns are indicated correctly and click OK. Alternately, you can load the camera positions data from the exe file, if available. For this purpose there is import exif button on the toolbar. You can see the data being loaded to the ground control pane. Don't forget to indicate the coordinate system. Click settings button, choose the corresponding coordinate system from the list and click OK. The blue dots you can see in the model view represent camera positions. You can check whether they correspond to the flight route. Now we can start the processing. First you need to align photos. Open Workflow menu and click Align Photos command. Choose High Accuracy for the best results and Ground Control Pair preselection to speed up the process of matching of the feature points detected on the photos. Photoscan will try to match features only on those photos which overlap according to the ground control data we have loaded before. It will take certain time to do the alignment. For my dataset around 15 minutes. If you're just going through the processing steps and don't care much about the accuracy of the results, you can set the low value for the accuracy parameter. This setting could be chosen for processing of a dataset right in the field, just to judge whether the data collected could be processed successfully. Finally, Alignment is finished, camera positions were refined and their estimated orientation can be seen in the model view. To see the point cloud better, you can switch off their blue rectangles representing cameras. Click the Show Cameras button on the toolbar. Photo alignment has been performed using only image data. The dataset I have prepared for the tutorial is quite a good one. However, while processing your own data you may encounter some non-linear deformations of the model. For example, so-called Powell effect. It will be visible on the point cloud already. 
To remove some non-linear deformations and improve the alignment results, Photoscan allows to implement ground control points with known reference coordinates. If you have this data for your project, you can run optimization procedure. Let's see how you should do it. First of all, you need to indicate ground control points on the photos. We call this procedure marker placement. To avoid time-consuming job of manual indicating of GCPs on every photo where they are visible, you can use guided marker placement approach. It means that Photoscan will suggest where you should place a marker. To be able to use program suggestions, you need to build geometry first. Go to the workflow menu and choose build geometry command. Select point cloud geometry type and say set face count parameter to 200,000 polygons. This is relatively low value, but it is enough for the purpose. It takes just several seconds and you can see the model reconstructed in the poorest quality. To place a marker, scroll to the photo where a GCP is visible. Double click on the photo, zoom in to see the marker well. Then switch to the Edit Markers mode. Right click on the projection of the GCP and choose Create Marker command from the context menu. A new marker has been added onto the ground control pane. Select it. Filter photos by the marker. Now in the photos pane you can see only those photos with where the same GCP is visible. Open one of them. Photoscan has already placed the marker for you. You need to accept the suggested location or refine it, if necessary, dragging the marker with the mouse. Repeat this for every photo on the list. You can see where the marker is placed on the model switching to the model view. Now right click on the marker on the ground control pane and choose the rename command from the context menu. Name the marker according to the GCP label. Now repeat the described procedure for every GCP. To achieve good optimization results, you should distribute around 10 GCPs evenly around the area to be reconstructed. In tutorial project we will use only 5 GCPs. Now, when all the markers have been placed, you need to load GCPs or markers coordinates. The procedure, the procedure is the same as for loading camera data. Click Import button on the ground control pane toolbar, browse to the folder where the prepared text file is, select it and click Open. Check the delimiter indicated and the column's numbers and click OK. You can see the loaded data on the ground control pane. Note that the markers will be automatically checked. Again, don't forget to set the correct coordinate system for the GCP's data. In my project it differs from the coordinate system indicated for camera data. So open Settings dialog, select the respective coordinate system from the list and click OK. Now you are ready to run optimization procedure. First of all, you need to uncheck all the cameras, since the optimization will be based only on markers data. If you have enough markers, you can uncheck some of them to exclude from the optimization. Later you can use them as control points to evaluate optimization results. I will use all five markers for optimization. Now open ground control settings dialog once again and set the values for the measurement accuracy parameters. Since your optimization is based on marker coordinates data, only marker accuracy parameter matters. Generally, it is recommended to set zero value since normally GCP coordinates are measured with significantly higher accuracy compared to the G GPS, that is camera data. Click OK. Click Optimize toolbar button and OK button again. 
When optimization is completed, you can evaluate the accuracy of georeferencing, of georeferencing judging from the error's values for control points if you have any left. Now you can move on to the second processing step, build geometry. First of all, you need to adjust bounding box. It indicates the region which will be reconstructed. In this project, in fact, we don't need to adjust bounding box. It was automatically set perfectly well. In general, the box can be resized and rotated. Note that red color side indicates the plane to be treated as ground plane. So it should be set under the model. Now you are ready to run build geometry step. Open workflow menu and choose build geometry command. For aerial imagery, you should always choose height field object type. Geometry type set as smooth. Target quality we set to medium value. Higher values can be preferred in the projects where super detailed geometry is required. Yet one should be careful when choosing high geometry quality value, since such operation will be very demanding in memory and processing power resources. Face count value should be increased up to several millions. Click OK. 3D model reconstruction is a computationally intensive operation. It can take quite a long time, so we will have to wait for a while to see the results. Finally, the model has been reconstructed and you can observe it in various modes. Wireframe solid and shaded. For more realistic and sharp visualization of the model, you can generate texture and apply it to the model. To build texture, go to the workflow menu and choose Build Texture command. Select Author Photo Mapping mode and Mosaic Blending mode. Generally, 4096 pixel value is enough for texture atlas width and height. But for more detailed texture, each value could be set to 8192 pixels. Click OK. Once the texture is built, you can see the model in texture view. The model itself can be exported, but in this tutorial our goal is to export author photo and dam, so how shall we do it? Go to the file menu, select export author photo command. If your model is georeferenced like ours in this tutorial, you can export author photo in geographic projection. Make sure that the relevant coordinate system is selected. Set mosaic value for the blending mode and check the fill holes option to generate continuous author photo. Leave the automatically suggested value for the pixel size. Split and blocks option can be helpful to export very large author photos. If you want to export just a part of the reconstructed area, you can indicate the boundaries of this part in the region section. In our project we will export author photo of the whole scene, so we click export button. Now we need to specify target file name and type and click save button. To generate dem, select it export dem command from the file menu. Again, we select geographic projection and check the indicated coordinate system. Select crop invalid dem option and leave default setting for the no data value. Here there are also split and blocks and indicate the region options that can be used for the same purpose as discussed for author photo export. So we click export button, specify target file name and type and click save button. We can open the exported files with any viewer and expect the results. Here is exported author photo and here is the dam. Finally, you can generate processing report that presents summary on the project including processing results and accuracy estimates. To generate the report, go to the file menu, select generate report command, type in the file name and click OK. 
Here is what I can process and report on our project. We can see a figure showing camera locations, some summary information on input data, information on georeference and accuracy is here, and finally, digital elevation model that we have already seen. This is the end of our tutorial illustrating the basic steps of aerial imagery processing workflow in Edge Soft PhotoScan. Good luck in your future projects.